Hi folks, this is David Fine from Watch Your Lip. I'm here with John Sleppy. Yes, sir. My brother and friend and 40 years in the boat mechanics industry. 40 years. 40 years. Now we're like going that. to, I've got our 25 horsepower Yamaha Tiller outboard motor, four stroke, and we are doing the 100 hour service. Now I am not a mechanic in by any means, and I've never even changed oil until just today on it on it on anything that makes you a mechanic well that makes me <laughs> a little bit more mechanically inclined but john's here and he's going to walk me through how to do some things today we are going to change out our fuel water uh filter separator guys that that is this thing right here fuel water separator as you can see it's a little corroded a little rusty and we are going to change it out all right john's going to show us how to do that i've got my new one right here don't forget to subscribe to the channel we've got plenty of fishing adventures as well down here in sunny south florida we catch everything from snakeheads to swordfish and everything in between Amen. check out our videos guys let's get to changing our fuel water separator now i bought this now, this is something that we need is yeah, that not right that's right that's like a strap wrench. Yeah. Okay. John, show me how this, how does this thing work? Okay, this baby, when you put it on a filter, and let's just use our new one for an example here. Okay. What you do, you always want to know which way you're going, clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay. All right, so um, clockwise, the way the, the clock turns. Yep is generally for tightening. For tightening. But you always want to be careful when you do it because every now and then one will be a reverse. It'll be counterclockwise. Oh, really? So whenever you're moving anything for the first time, you want to move it real slow. Take it slow. Yeah, just in case you're making it tighter instead of looser. And you'll, if you're careful, you'll catch it and then you won't damage it. But if you go too tight, you'll break something. Got it. And uh, All right, so now this thing is wrapped. Why is that yeah. wrapped with plastic? That's to keep it clean. Just like anything else that goes on the, in, that works anything inside your motor, you want it surgically clean. You want it spotless in there. Okay. And this is a filter. It's designed to filter out anything that's in your fuel. Typically moisture, sand, debris, sludge, dirt, whatever can accumulate in the bottom of a gas tank, believe it or not, over time, things start to accumulate, fuel goes bad, it gets clumpy and nasty. Okay. And w water is the main culprit. You really? get moisture in the tank. And then this, that's why they call it fuel water separator, separates the fuel from the water so your water doesn't enter your engine and damage it. Oh, water damages engines, huh? Yep. Isn't that funny? A thing that's meant to be in the water, water damages. All right, so now, <laughs> so show me how this strap works. Okay. What do we do? Okay, so. Um, we were going to be we're going to be tightening this baby on, yeah. right? So we know that that would be counter that would be counterclockwise or counter this would be clockwise, but we're going to take it off. So we want to go counterclockwise. So we want to put our strap wrench on it, yeah. and then pull back and then on you the wrench. And you pull oh, back on the wrench, it tightens it, and it gets on there, right? And, and then and then when you go to push it forward. It's already it got a good you. grip on it. So you don't have to like grab it with your fingers and rip your hands apart. That's right. And yeah. generally once they're on there for a while, they get tight. Even yeah. if you put it on loose, it gets tight over time. Okay. So anyhow, the plastic is to keep it clean. Yeah. So before you open that, and, and you want this open and uh, exposed as little as possible. Got so it. So before we, we do that. take that guy off. That's right. right. We want to make sure this, this one's going to cooperate and break loose now is this going to be dirty is is fuel going to spill out of there yep fuel is going to come out right. and and it and you know hopefully it's not too dirty okay but what we what we're going to start with here is we're just going to break it loose so nice and easy yeah nice and easy is it twisting it's moving yeah it's moving i'm just making sure i'm turning it the right way <laughs> okay you <laughs> know i'm looking at it again so if we were going to be going that would be tightening. This is loosening it. So we're gonna just move it a little bit at a time and there, there it goes, there it, it broke goes. free. So it wasn't on too tight, perfect. Now typically when you break it loose like that, you could have gas pouring out of it. Yeah. Since the engine hasn't been started in a while, it's likely the line isn't pumped full of fuel and Got that's it. why it's not coming out, but the filter should still have a ton of fuel in it. Got it. Now, when you put a new fuel water separator on your 
on your engine, yeah. you're basically taking a, a big gulp of fuel out of your out goes. of your system, and here it starts to leak. So we're gonna put something down so that it can catch that. Okay. No sense. All right, so we're just gonna put some rags underneath it. Yeah. Because it's not gonna be too That's right. drastic. That's right. It's gonna be basically like a cup of, of fuel. If we hold it straight, yep. it won't spill too much. If oh, we it. hold it sideways, it's gonna dump everywhere. So it's not pressurized right now. That's correct. It's just, just, just try not to spill it. That's right. We're, it's, we're like a toddler learning how to use a sippy cup here. More or less, that's <laughs> exactly right. Okay, it's twisty, twisty. That's pretty rusty. Yeah, so that's a real, that's a real dirty uh, looking wow. old, old filter. And you can see even inside of the filter where it's supposed to be surgically clean and spotless. Yep. Um, you see corrosion starting to happen. And the only way you're going to get these parts to corrode is if water touches them. Okay. So actually at some point there's been water between the fuel tank, the lines, and the filter. Okay. Um, that's why you want to change it commonly. Okay. If you notice... So, uh, that, that's a little bit of a difference, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, and if you notice your boat starting to go slower yeah. or not perform correctly, you the first thing you want to check is that. Okay. Because as you can see, it's pretty dirty looking. Got it. Now, um, when you when you go and you put a new filter on it, you you want to try to fill the filter up with nice fresh fuel to prevent when you try to start it up, okay. it from not starting. Oh. If, if that, so he needs he needs that fuel in it. Or it's gonna not have fuel in order to start. That's right. Now, can we once we put that on? Can we just pump the ball and just squeeze it in there? And we can. Okay. And and we may have to keep it loose to to prime the filter to get it in there. We might have to put it on loose to get it to pump. Okay. To fill up because it works on vacuum too. This. Uh, yeah, that's a vacuum too. Yeah. So we might have to tighten it, squeeze it, and then loosen it. But anyway, we'll do that. If you want to pierce the plastic, we're going to pierce the plastic and we're going to take it off of there. Got okay, it? yep. And voila. Voila. And the reason we're using the box is we want to just keep our filter up from, not, from falling over. Right, so, so we're going to keep it. The box will help keep it standing up straight. That's right. And we're going to do one little quick thing here, right over here on the, in the sand. Okay. Just to have a look at the fuel that comes out of it. So it's pretty dirty. If it wasn't filthy and disgusting like that, I would pour it in here. Yeah, but, but it is. It is filthy wow. and disgusting. So. And that's, that's probably from this this thing here. Is that correct? This it's getting it because the, the fuel is pretty new. Yep, but, but this has been on your boat probably for a long time. Correct. So it's filtered a lot of fuel. Got it. And, got who, it, got you know, who knows, maybe that the last time this was changed was a year ago or uh, more. More. Definitely and, more. <laughs> okay, so how many times has the fuel tank been filled with, with fuel? A and, bunch. And how many times has it run low and sat low on fuel while it sat outside of your house? Got it. You know, and when that happens and the fuel tank is low on fuel, yep. water or condensation tends to build up on the inside of the tank. And then you put more fresh fuel in there, but there's already condensation in there. Right. And that's how that happens. Got that's it. how it starts to get. All right. So basically we're, we're just going to dispose of this by putting it in a tank and bringing it to an auto parts store. Is that correct? That's correct. Got it. We didn't make too much of a mess. No, not at all. But what we want to do is we're going to put this guy back on but we always want to put a little bit of a little kind of lubricant on there and anything that has a rubber seal okay so we're going to put some lubricant on the rubber seal that's right and we're just using some lower lower gear, lower gear case lube there that's right and it's just like a thing dip your finger in there and just wipe it right that's right we just want it when it when it makes contact with the metal part yeah. we're going to turn it a little to make it tighter and when we turn it a little to make it tighter, we want it to slide and not grab that seal and, and make it more difficult to to get it on there nice and snug. That makes a lot of sense. And then the yeah. threads. Yeah. And now, obviously, this is for fuel, so we don't want to, like, really mix it with oil <laughs> okay. or anything. Yeah. We're just going to put it ever so light so that it's... So just it lubrication. turns on there. That's right. Okay. Cap back on the oil. Yep. 
All right. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Improvise. Improvise. Sometimes we just pull out now, the dipstick. Do we clean this thread down here? Now that thread, yes, if it's I'm dirty. Almost, I'm almost looking at that guy. I'm looking at this thing. Yeah. Okay. And so we're going to just put this on here and see if there's dirt on it. Okay, it looks kind of dirty. Let's see, what did that look like? It looked... Oh, yeah, so yeah. that thread had some... Now, is that oil or is that it, it doesn't, dirt or yeah, doesn't it matter? It looks like dirt, but it, 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 it also looks like oil, but it's black, so there's some dirty grit in there. Okay, now the, the outer rim of this thing has got some rust. Yeah. Is, is that okay? Let's see. Here, I'll take a snap of picture. Okay, that's a good idea. All right, so the thread around the outside of this, go ahead, John. The thread around the outside of this thing has got some dirt and rust and stuff like that on it, but we're just gonna wipe this down and make sure that when we put our new fuel water separator on, that that stuff is not getting jammed inside or, or gets lost inside of our fuel system, right? That's exactly right. Okay. Good, 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 good. So a little bit of rust on the outside, outer side doesn't matter, but we just don't want it getting on the inside. That's right. Yep, so it's... It's amazing how corroded this thing got. Yep. I wonder how old that is. I don't know, I bought it, bought the boat about a year and a half ago. It came with it. Yeah, so brake cleaner comes in handy. A little bit of brake cleaner. Yeah. Jeez, we're using brake cleaner all over the place. So we're just gonna... After wiping it, dry wiping it, then we're putting a little brake cleaner on there. Yeah. Make sure it's nice and clean. That's right. And then we'll use a clean spot. Let's make sure that. Got it. We get nothing in there because our filter is designed to pick up really what goes through the fuel tank. Right. But Obviously, we want everything as clean as possible. Okay. So we got that. That looks pretty clean. Yep. And really what happens is the fuel gets squirted through the center and yep. it comes out through these holes. And then it and then it gets distributed through the hose okay. to the motor. Now, if we needed to, we could actually t pick up this gas tank and pour the fuel into the into the filter right now. Okay. But we're going to see if we can, if we can somehow right, so you're, get it. You're pumping pump. it. Yeah. Okay, so now oh, okay. you're pumping a little bit of gas in there just to get that thing going. That's right. And we're going to see if we can... Okay. okay. There it goes. Now, does that mean it's full? It's or filling. filling. Or it's filling. Now it's filling, yeah. There we Got go. Got it. All okay, right. Good. So what happened is we just we just made contact with the with right. the uh, base of this, yep. right? We turned it until it made contact. But so it's, it's not sealed yet, so there's not a vacuum yet. That's right. Got it. But we did see fuel going, all it needs is just a little bit. We want it to be bled, which means we want, when we squeeze that, we want to know that the fuel is ready to get squirted into it. Okay. So we squeezed it, we saw the fuel come out, then we put the, the filter on so that, so that it is tight enough to create a vacuum. And now, we could actually pump it, fill, fill it up with fuel if we pump the primer bulb. But, Got it. But it's just ever so, it's just barely touching. So now we want to keep our, start with our measurements. How far can we tighten this? Okay. We don't want to make it too tight. We don't want to make it too loose. So usually it tells you that you can take a half a turn from contact or three quarters of a current turn from contact. Does okay. it say anything on there, David? Can you uh, see? Blah, 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 or is it in not a foreign there. language? No. Nope. Foreign language? Yeah, it doesn't. Okay, so see. so for general. It does not say. All right, so for general uh, installation of a fuel water separator, as soon as it makes contact, boom, it made contact right yep. there. Now we want to go a half to three quarters of a turn, and we should always be able to do it with our hand. Got it. Yes, we have a, a wrench because they get tight after sitting there for a while, but if everything is clean and spotless, you yep. should be able to put it on hand tight. Yep. So that's about a half right there. Yep. Got and it. And this way, if, like, say you're out running the boat, and you got bad fuel, you got water in the fuel, the boat's not running all of a sudden, it won't start. 
or it's running cockamamie or halfway, you know. Cockamamie. Cockamamie, yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, out of sorts. Then uh, you can take your fuel water separator off and then like we poured it. Yeah. It was, that was dirty looking fuel. Yeah. That fuel alone could keep the engine from running as fast really? as it should. All right. Well, if the engine just plain quits working or starts running real erratic, the first place you want to go is right there. Really? Yep. Okay. And if you can you keep your wrench on you, just yep. in case. But so this is a good thing to keep on the boat? Yeah, an extra one of these. An extra fuel water separator really? is always a good thing to have. Okay. That's right. Um, and so now you got an extra set of plugs and you got an extra fuel water separator. That's right. Plug. And it wasn't too expensive. I think that was, if I remember right, it was only like 17, 17 bucks. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, at a, I was at a West Marine. Okay, so now are we gonna are we ratcheting this thing shut? Nope, because I was able to turn it a half a turn with my hands. Okay. We want to we're gonna keep it just like that. Obviously, we're gonna check it and run it, and make sure that nothing is leaking. Okay. But um, just from doing it year after year after year. All right. Uh, so so this thing is just used to get the other one off. Yeah, if it's too tight. If it's too tight. It. Okay. This one, this one, the way it is, if you were to check it in a month or two months, yep. you should be able to turn it with your hand. Good. Now, is that is that finished? Uh, yep. The fuel water separator. Fuel water is done. separator's done. Yep. All right. So we have the fuel water separator on and tight. It's a half a turn from the time that it touched the base. As soon as it made contact, hand, hand tight. We, we start counting how many revolutions we turn it. We're only going to turn it one half of a revolution. Okay. The whole fuel water separator, and that's it. Then we're going to come over to our primer bulb yep. and we're going to squeeze it and we can hear it sucking fuel up yep. and we're going to fill the, we're going to fill that fuel filter up with fuel now. Okay. And as just as we were about to put it on, we were pumping this and yep. we saw fuel coming out. We saw out it coming it. out. So that, that let us know that if we could get that baby in place with the vacuum, we should be able to fill it up with fuel by squeezing the primer bulb and it certainly feels like it's just filled it up. Just filled it up. All right, so now that that's full, that that's pretty much the end of the story, or unless you're missing something. That's it, it should start right up. Oh, actually, All right, John, our fuel water separator is complete. It is. We've got our new one installed, not super hard, but again, a few little nuances. If you've never changed one like me, it helps to have a guy that knows what he's doing, show you how to do it. And now we've got it on video and hope this hope you learned something guys about reinstalling a fuel water separate. John, thank you so much for all your help. And you're welcome. And just for the record, that's the most common thing to fail when you're out using your boat. You know, if your right. boat should start running erratic or not start or That's a common thing. That's the first thing you want to go do is a fuel water separator and have an extra one on board. Very good. All right. You heard it guys from the man of the hour, John Slepian. My brother, my friend, my mechanic. Uh, guys, if you learned something, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Check out our fishing videos. Guys, this is our 100 hour service we're doing on our Yamaha outboard. We're gonna have a video where we go through the entire 100 hour service. It's gonna be a longer video, but for now, that's the fuel water separator. Uh, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned and God bless and watch you live. Amen.